Hello to everyone. My name is Martina Knobloch and I'm responsible for the marketing activities. On behalf of OLS Omni Life Science, I warmly welcome you to our webinar on technologies in 2D and 3D cell culture that avoid stress for the cells and for yourself. Before I will hand over to our speakers, let me briefly introduce OLS as your partner in cell research. OLS shows 17 years of experience in the market. At our headquarters in Bremen, Germany, we also operate a production facilities where we manufacture cell culture instruments for global distribution. Our key focus areas are cell counting, cell culture, flow cytometry, digital imaging, and real-time analysis. Next to the OLS brand, we distribute and support further brands. With that being said, OLS offers a powerful portfolio to support your success in cell research. That's all from my side. So let me hand over to our speakers. It's a pleasure for me to welcome our speakers of today, Markus Urich and Amir Kerich, both are sales and product managers at OLS Omni Life Science. So the stage is yours. Thank you for this nice introduction, Martina. Welcome to our presentation with the title, No Stress for Cells and Staff, Modern Technologies in 2D and 3D Cell Culture. My name is Markus Urich, and my colleague Amir Kerich and I will present a workflow that is centered around your cell culture exper experiments. This workflow is designed in such a way that it creates a low stress environment for your cells and for the people who are performing the experiments. We will focus on 2D cell culture, cryopreservation, cell counting, imaging and cell analysis, and 3D spheroids and organoids. I'm curious, Markus, uh, how can low stress be created during this workflow? Amir, there are many factors that can create stress for your cells. Two of them are, for example, working with a cell culture medium that is not optimized for your cell type. Another factor is working with a serum that is not the best choice for your cells. Um, with our products, we meet the needs of your cells individually. For example, we offer cell culture medium media that have a certain uh, formulation that is optimized for your cells. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we uh, offer different sera that um, help your cells to grow better. For example, uh, fetal bovine serum, adult uh, serum. Um, and we also have different sera from uh, different uh, animals like uh, horses or rabbits. Mm -hmm. Are there further factors uh, that can stress the cells or uh, of the people who perform the experiments? Uh, yes, for example, um, mycoplasma infections. Mycoplasma uh, infections are very common. Um, according to the literature, between 15 and 35 percent of all continuous cell lines are infected with mycoplasma. Mm -hmm. Mycoplasma are the smallest type of bacteria, and they are tricky because you cannot always see them under a normal light microscope. Uh, if you have an infection, they stress the cells because they, they change uh, the param parameters of the, of the cells that you normally would like to measure in a cell culture experiment. And it is, uh, the problem is that uh, it can, it can happen that uh, for a long time, um, a mycoplasma infection stays unnoticed and all measurements that you have, do have done during this time, um, they are not correct and you cannot publish them. That's why it's important to, to screen for uh, mycoplasma infections. And we, you can, for example, use our staining dyes mm -hmm. Um, like uh, DAPI or HOST, they are normally used to stain the DNA of the nucleus, 
Mm -hmm. However, they can also be used to stain the DNA of the mycoplasma. So when you have no infection, you have only a blue nucleus. Mm -hmm. However, when you have an infection, you, you see apart from the blue nucleus, you see, you see uh, small blue, blue dots indicating that there is uh, probably an, a mycoplasma infection. And if you want to know this for sure or want to confirm this, you can use our mycoplasma detection kit mm -hmm. that you see here on the left hand side. This is the result of a PCR using 16S ribosomal RNA specific primers and uh, the, ampli the amplified um, DNA of the mycoplasma is here um, uh, loaded on an agarose gel. So you can use this for detection. And normally it goes without saying that uh, you would directly discard a cell line that is infected, of course. However, there are rare occasions when you want to keep your cell lines, even though it's infected because it's a precious cell line, then you can use our mycoplasma elimination kit that you see here on the right hand side. Um, U stands for untreated, T stands for treated, and you see there is no band in the treated uh, sample indicating that you got rid of the infection. Mm -hmm. uh, Markus, at which time points should the culture be screened for the mycoplasma infection? Ah, that's a good question, Amir. Uh, it is very important to, to check, for, check that there is no mycoplasma infection uh, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, a good time point would be, um, for example, before freezing the cells, uh, because then you would be sure that all your frozen cells are mycoplasma free. Mm -hmm. We offer also different kinds of uh, freezing media, media that are ready to use, for example, our Cryo XL uh, cell freezing media. They are optimized for freezing cells of different types. And we also have a um, universal freezing medium called freezing one that can be used for several cell types. Mm -hmm. uh, Markus, uh, apart from the optimized freezing medium, um, which further factors uh, influence cell survival during the freezing process? Um, it is, for example, very important that the cells are in the logarithmic growth phase, also called exponential growth phase. You can determine this uh, with our KC cell counter, for example. Then it's, uh, for, it is uh, very important, of course, to know the cell number that you want to freeze. This can also be checked by our KC cell counter. Uh, after several um, protocol steps, you add freezing solutions uh, to your cells. This could be, for example, um, our freeze in one universal freezing medium. Mm -hmm. Then you go on with the protocol and freeze the cells usually at uh, minus 80 degrees. And for long term storage, st storage, you put the cells into a liquid nitrogen. Mm -hmm. We have um, special um, freezing media optimized for different cell types. For example, for regular cell lines, primary cells, stem cells, and hybridoma cells. Mm -hmm. um, are there further factors um, than uh, can um, necessarily uh, influence the quality control of the cell culture? Yes, for example, for some uh, cell types, it's important to know that you that the cells have a normal carrier type. This is, for example, important. Uh, when you work with induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh, for example, for in vitro assays, uh, if you have a changed carrier type, then sometimes also um, the, the phenotype can be slightly changed and the, the cells have, um, have, have other properties and you want to prevent that. That's why it's always good to check if you have a normal carrier type. Mm -hmm. And especially important, uh, it is to know that you have a normal carrier type when you work uh, in vivo. For example, when, um, when you differentiate your iPSCs into a precursor cell line, mm -hmm. and these precursor cells are meant for injections into humans, then of course you don't want to trigger the growth of a tumor. And that's why you must be sure that you, you work with a normal uh, carrier type. 
Markus, you spoke about karyotyping and uh, optimizing the freezing process. But what about the thawing process? What is important here? Yes, uh, some cell types are more difficult to thaw than others. For example, induced pluripotent stem cells, they are quite sensitive. IPSCs do not grow on plastic. You need a certain coating. Then you can add a rock inhibitor to increase cell survival. Then it's important to minimize osmotic shock. And then it's also a good idea to keep the cells as cell aggregates because the cells, uh, uh, IPSCs especially, uh, like the contact to adjacent cells. Mm -hmm. So when you take a cryo while with IPSCs from the liquid nitrogen, and then you put the cells into a conical tube, mm -hmm. then it's important to add medium slowly in a dropwise manner to minimize osmotic shock. Mm -hmm. It's also important to add enough medium to dilute the DMSO. I mean, when the cells were frozen with DMSO, Mm -hmm. because DMSO at higher concentration is toxic to the cells. Mm -hmm. Then it's also important uh, to prevent the too harsh pipetting because you do not want to disrupt the cell aggregates. Mm -hmm. And after storing the cells, which steps should be taken if you want to perform experiments with these cells? At the beginning, is also it, it always makes sense to know the, the exact cell number. You can measure the cell number with our, our KC cell count and analyzer, which is produced by us by OLS Omni Life Science. It is manufactured in Germany. And with the KC cell counter, you can uh, uh, measure the cell numbers and cell sizes very precisely. You can count any cell type or cell aggregates that you want to count. For example, mammalian cells, bacteria, fungi. Mm -hmm. It delivers uh, highly reproducible data. You can distinguish between dead and viable cells and no sample preparation is necessary. So here you need no tripe and blue, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, our Casey cell counter is cited in high impact journals and you have a full quality control. Mm. That sounds easy. Um, do you have cell culture experiments in your mind? Uh, that are easy to perform and that give you a valuable readout. Yes, Amir. For example, experiments with our Sensel Owl incubator microscope. The Sensel Owl, Owl is equipped with 24 mini cameras, and you can set up your experiment in a 24 well plate. So you add all your re re reagents uh, to your uh, and your cells and to your reagents to the uh, 24 cell culture plate, mm -hmm. and then you put the, the 24 um, well plate into the sensor owl, and then you put both into the incubator, and you can monitor and control everything from a notebook. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, monitor remotely your cells that are growing in the incubator. You get bright field and digital face contrast images. And now you probably will ask why? Why is it necessary to directly take pictures in the, while the device is in the incubator and um, um, make measurements in the incubator? And here are the answers. Mm -hmm. So you can do live cell imaging in the incubator. You get a convenient readout. No handling is required. Data is collected automatically 24 seven. It saves time, uh, work, and costs, and you have a reduced contamination risk. The device uh, looks really um, practical and handy. Uh, which assays can be performed with this technology? The Sensor Owl has versatile imaging capabilities, and it gets a visual, visual validation. So seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. um, indeed, you can. Uh, um, you can perform quite a, a, a lot of experiments, different applications with it. Uh, for example, you can analyze uh, the cell growth, document the cell growth, make migration scratch assays, screen the effects of compounds given to the cells and many others. Mm -hmm. and, but you can also use the sensor owl for quality control purposes. So usually, usually you get the best recovery of cells after sawing when the cells were frozen in the logarithmic growth phase. 
And you see here four pictures and below uh, the growth curves uh, measured with the sensor owl. And uh, you see on the two pictures on the left that the cells are in the uh, logarithmic growth phase. And when you grow cells during this phase, then you usually have a good recovery after sowing. However, on the right hand side, you see the cells have al already left the logarithmic growth phase and they are already in the static phase. And um, if you freeze the cells during this time, then you, it can happen that you have a poor cell survival. Mm -hmm. You can check with the, with the sensor owl. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus, you said that the sensor owl is suitable for real-time monitoring. Uh, can you give me an example for that? Uh, yes, Amir. For example, you can observe gap closure over time in a so-called wound healing assay or also called a scratch assay. Mm -hmm. so, so what you are doing is you take a cell culture plate, um, uh, let the cells grow in the cell culture plate, and then um, you make a scratch, for example, with a, with a piper tip. Mm -hmm. And then the cells um, grow towards the gap and try to, to close the gap. And you can observe this uh, with the sensor owl. And from this, from, uh, from these pictures and from the data measured, uh, you can draw important conclusions about the properties of your cells. Okay. Are there other applications for, real, uh, for which real-time monitoring uh, would be useful? Uh, yes, for example, uh, so these are pictures uh, taken with the sensor owl. Uh, you can monitor the cytostatic effects of drugs in real time and remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, here in, in the first row, you see uh, untreated cells. They, they are confluent after 24 hours approximately. However, when you treat the cells uh, with a 25 micromolar of a um, cytostatic drug, then you can see that already after six hours, the growth of the cells is inhibited and the cells start to die. And this is even more pronounced if you double the concentration of the cytostatic drug to 50 micromolar that you see here in row number three, then you see already after three hours, the, the growth of the cells is inhibited. Mm -hmm. And th this is a, um, a, really, a real ex um, advantage over endpoint assays here, this is real-time monitoring, and you just uh, get a, a bigger picture, a better, better information because you, you take many uh, pictures. And you can, you can you know exactly what happens after some hours and some hours later. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I believe that the real-time monitoring has advantages over endpoint essays. Um, but do you use any further technology uh, that supports or uh, is able to monitor um, real cells in real time? Uh, yes, for example, you can do this with uh, our Excelligence uh, real-time cell analyzer. Mm -hmm. You can uh, monitor in real-time cellular processes. So also here, this is not, not an endpoint assay. Uh, the Excelligence real-time cell analyzer has complementary functions to the sensor owl. Mm -hmm. um, in contrast to the sensor owl, where you can use a normal 24 well plates, uh, plastic plates, here you need uh, special, um, special plates that are equipped with gold electrodes on the bottom of each uh, well. So what you do, you, you apply a low voltage, low current to the gold electrodes. And then you seed your cells onto the gold electrodes and um, in the wells. And the, the cells have a, have a certain uh, resistance and impedance. And you measure the impedance and from this impedance, you can draw important conclusions about the properties of your cells. For example, changes in cell number, morphology changes, adhesion strengths, and barrier function. There are um, many um, assays that you can apply. For example, cell, measure cell invasion and migration, or also measure uh, special 
uh, assays for cellular cardiology research. And it's important to say that you here uh, measure under physiological conditions because this is label free. Mm. Markus, what is your readout telling you? I referred, uh, I referred to the impedance of the cells as the readout. Yes, uh, the impedance finally really, uh, results in, um, in kinetic profiles that can serve as a quality control. Uh, these kinetic profiles are uh, a kind of fingerprints from each cell, cell type, uh, reflecting surface attachment, morphology, and growth rates of the cells. And um, this, the shapes of these curves are very characteristic, characteristic for each uh, cell type. Mm -hmm. And if you have a deviation from this typical shape, from this typical characteristics of the curves, then you already know that something is going on with your cells. This could be, for example, a cross contamination with another cell line, a contamination with bacteria or a treatment uh, with a drug. Mm -hmm. um, Markus, you said that the Zensel O and the uh, Excelligence real-time real cell analyzer have uh, complementary functions. But uh, I wonder if there is an overlap of the essays that you can apply with both both devices? Uh, yes, there is an overlap. Uh, for example, um, I showed you the the images uh, taken with the sensor owl about the, the the effect of the cytostatic drug. Very similarly, here with the excelligence, you can also measure um, cyto, cytotoxic effects. Uh, you let the cells grow until they reach uh, more or less 100% uh, 100, 100 confluence or confluency mm -hmm. or a little less. And um, then you add a cytostatic drug, a possible cytostatic drug that you want to measure if it's really cytotoxic mm -hmm. here in this picture called effector. And then you see here that the, the growth curves, they, they go down uh, here in yellow, green and red. And the faster the curves go down, the more toxic is the substance. Mm -hmm. uh, Markus, can you only measure cytotoxicity that is mediated by substances, or you can also measure other kinds of cytotoxicity? Ah, it's good that you ask, Amir. Yes, it's uh, possible to also measure uh, the. Um, cytotoxicity mediated by other cells, for example, natural killer cells, mm -hmm. or also antibody dependent uh, cytotoxicity. Mm -hmm. You can benefit from uh, real-time monitoring because it's very fast. You can measure a 96 well plate within 15 seconds. It's label free, so you get more physiological results. You get a full kinetic readout, so you can you, you capture both short and long term effects. It's time saving, less labor intensive, and uh, you get easily quantifiable data. Um, and finally, I would like to emphasize that it's highly objective because uh, due to automatic measurements, you have a reduced person to person variability. So we you got information about. Um, 2D cell, 2D uh, monolayer cell culture, and uh, also about uh, cryopreservation, uh, cell counting, and imaging. And now uh, let's move on to three-dimensional, three-dimensional uh, cell culture, um, which is a, a really big and important uh, topic. And Amir will tell you now about this topic. Thank you, Markus. So now we are moving uh, with the 3D cell culture uh, topic. And um, in, uh, I would like to speak more about um, the automated platforms for cultivation, uh, for cultivating 3D cell structures, um, how to monitor them, how to clear uh, those tissues, and how to image them uh, with uh, more advanced high content imaging systems or uh, a fully automated platform for, for screenings. Um, this would be like a, a short overview of what I would like to present. 
Amir, I'm curious about the long-term 3D stem cell culture. Is there any suitable platform in your portfolio that, that can be used for that? Uh, thank you, Marcus, for this question. Um, before, um, before I start uh, speaking about the 3D cell culture, I would like really just to emphasize the importance of um, long-term culture, of long-term 3D culture, in order to, um, to, to, to really improve uh, the scale up of uh, stem cells and their uh, differentiation potential. Uh, it is important to know uh, that the, are, there are many factors that they can influence the culture uh, in these long terms, let's say more than three or four months. Um, for example, there is ne necrosis, uh, lack of oxygen, for example, uh, lack of diffusion, and all these parameters um, can be uh, very critical for long-term cultures and uh, or of course, uh, there is a, a automated platform uh, which supports um, unlimited stem cell expansion uh, in over, over several passages um, of, for example, iPSCs, embryonic stem cells and neural stem cells. And um, with the zero 3D incubator and bioreactor, uh, the researchers are also able to differentiate and to cultivate organoids and spheroids from cortical, cardiac, and hepatic cell fate. Uh, additionally, uh, with the zero 3D incubator and bioreactor, it is also possible to keep alive uh, human tissue pieces from human organs um, uh, over several weeks. I wonder if we can observe the cell growth of a 3D culture in real time uh, in an incubator microscope. What are the benefits of an incubator-based multi-camera microscope? Um, yes, of course. So if we, if we speak about um, a 3D cell culture, it is also important to know or to, to explore the possibilities, uh, for example, how to um, analyze uh, the cell aggregation process, how the cells are coming together. Or for example, um, if, the 3D aggregates are attached to the bottom to observe in real time how the cells are growing out of this 3D cell culture. All these um, uh, parameters are very important to know um, if, uh, for example, if we apply um, a real-time cell aggregation analysis or time-lapse imaging, we have like uh, the options and the features with the Zen cell, what you also described before, Marcus, uh, to do that. And um, there is also because of a, of a very small footprint of the device and uh, the fact that the, that the, that the device is uh, compatible uh, either at room temperature or an incubator, we don't have any limitations there uh, to observe uh, the cell aggregation or the outgrowth analysis of the 3D stru structures. Wow, oh, that's very interesting. After cultivating highly complex organoids, spheroids, or tissue pieces in the zero 3D or sensor owl, mm -hmm. how can we how can we prepare these samples for better and easier imaging? So, Marcus, when we speak about uh, imaging of the highly complex 3D structures, it is important to explore the possibilities um, of improving. Uh, the imaging process. Uh, and one of these alternatives um, is uh, to use um, uh, a clearing, uh, a tissue clearing uh, technology, which helps uh, preparing, uh, which helps um, the researchers in the phase of the tissue preparation, for example, by lipid removal by SDS buffer and the use of hydrogen uh, instead of paraffin and uh, OCT. Uh, helps with uh, either with the passive or electrophoretic removal to prepare the tissues um, for better and uh, more uh, um, for better uh, in order to get uh, highly um, qualitative images. Um, for example, uh, uh, the X clarity tissue clearing system is validated with uh, multiple tissue samples and is, for example, compatible with all imaging systems. 
So um, with the X Clarity Tissue Clearing System or platform, uh, you accelerate your 3D imaging workflow tremendously. Ah, okay. You described a very nice workflow for the cultivation and differentiation of organoids, spheroids, and tissue pieces in the Zero 3D and Sensor mm -hmm. Owl. If I need publication grade images per click, how can I do that? So while working in the lab um, and spending hours and, and days uh, in the cell culture and cultivating the cells, it is really important to have a, a powerful um, microscope or imaging system uh, that first of all fits in an ordinary lab by size and that is close to the, to the operator and to the incubator where the cells are located. I mean, preventing um, going around uh, and uh, um, carrying uh, those uh, uh, multiple plates uh, and increasing the risk of, of, of contaminations. That's the reason that it's important to have a, a, a very powerful and intuitive, easy imaging systems, imaging system close in the lab. So um, the Selena X um, allows uh, the researchers, um, the operators, the users in the lab, uh, the possibility uh, to do uh, advanced um, live cell imaging analysis, uh, Z-Stack, to do bright field and uh, fluorescence images uh, in a very easy and intuitive way. Um, and the most important is that uh, the powerful uh, ex, um, uh, software of the Serena X uh, also allows uh, the user uh, to create uh, really publication ready to use pictures just per click. Okay, I would like to screen everything from organelles to organisms. Can you give me some examples for that? What kind of technology do we need for that? Um, Markus, in, in the laboratories, when the researchers are um, analyzing uh, the events, the events on a subcellular or, or, or cellular level or tissue, organoid, or even on a, a whole organism level, um, it is important to have um, the technology um, or to use the technology uh, with broad sample compatibility um, that has a, a feature of uh, fast scanning and uh, um, uh, bright field and fluorescence channels uh, uh, images. Um, all these uh, features, uh, the Y-Scan uh, platform, uh, which, had, which has in addition also robotic arms and the powerful artificial intelligence um, integrated um, in the software. Um, so with the Y-Scan, um, you're really free uh, to, do, to do everything from the subcellular uh, level to the whole organism 24-7 uh, uh, with sample loading and out outloading and um, with a unique uh, stable plate design. Thank you, Amir. Finally, we would like to summarize the key points of our presentation regarding uh, 2D cell culture. For example, it is important to offer um, the best uh, cell culture medium and serum to the cells and uh, check for um, mycoplasma infections uh, on a regular basis. For cryopreservation, it is important to use a suitable freezing medium that is that we offer ready to use. Uh, <clears throat> and also to freeze the cells while they are in the logarithmic growth phase. For cell counting, um, you can use our uh, KC cell counter. The KC is, is uh, capable of measuring not only the cell number, but also the cell sizes. And regarding imaging and cell analysis, we want to emphasize that um, the, the readout that you get from real-time monitoring is sometimes uh, more uh, valuable than the readout uh, from endpoint assays. And in the terms of 3D cell culture, like spheroids and organoids, 
uh, it is crucial uh, to have an automated system uh, which supports uh, the cell culture, long-term culture in a very uh, easy and reproducible way, like our zero 3D incubator and uh, bioreactor, including um, uh, the imaging uh, portfolio uh, for observing the cell aggregation and uh, clearing uh, tissue systems and also uh, at the end, uh, very powerful. It is really important to have a, a powerful uh, imaging systems uh, that uh, with uh, which you can analyze your three D st structures in an easy and fast way. Thank you again for for your attention. I would like to uh, uh, invite you to visit our website and to follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube. I would like again to thank you in the name of my colleague Marco Zurich and myself. If you have any questions regarding our products, if you have uh, any, if you have a, a wish to to demo our device, or if you need any additional or further technical information regarding our portfolio, please uh, contact us via our email uh, or uh, via our website. Thank you again, and I wish you uh, have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye.